Um, first of all, I wanted to start with uh, precising a few, few elements about the fund. Mm. Um, the way when this fund started, uh, it was supported and still supported. That was about five years ago. About five years ago, uh, in 2012, 2013. Um, as a project, um, it, uh, it was facilitated by uh, various donors, development partners, uh, with the aim of you know, supporting uh, climate resilience and uh, accompanying the country in its commitments in uh, commitments with the Paris Agreements, which are linked to low gas emission and uh, energy efficiency. So as of today, when we look at uh, the green economy entirely, uh, it cross costs many sectors, including uh, uh, what I, I like to call infrastructure, uh, uh, green buildings, um, smart agriculture, uh, and, and, many, and many other sectors, as long as you uh, comply with you know, the, the, the metrics around uh, energy efficiency and, and, and low gas emission. Now, um, the, way, the way the fund was designed was to pose to be a co-financing support. Uh, as much as we hear funds, it's not a, a fund that invests directly in, in, into projects. Mm -hmm. And my belief is where we can operate in the near future is, yes, addressing the issue of private sector allocation uh, of funds mm -hmm. uh, by making sure that number one we get you know good projects coming into our table, but sure. also sensitizing uh, uh, the public or the private investor in designing projects that are more uh, bankable. Now, Hubert, yes. maybe maybe before we, we carry on, you talk about mobilizing investment, and we do know that you have mobilized at least one hundred and forty million dollars. That's in the five years, and this has gone into about thirty two investments. Tell me. What are these investments and uh, what are the immediate, at least, targets that you're looking at? Well, th th those investments are quite various. Eh? Mm -hmm. With, I mean, the, one of the last uh, milestones was the e-waste uh, uh, plant in, in Bugesera. Uh, basically, it's an electronic uh, waste plant, so we, we, you can bring all your, your old electronic equipment and they will be scrapped and be recycled in the long term. So uh, we have also uh, forestry. We have terracing, we have um, uh, uh, green walls by the rivers, mm -hmm. uh, and those are programs to sustain uh, a rural area, but at the same time uh, uh, sensitizing on climate change with the support of CSOs, NGOs, and local governments. Now, what you have to understand is that most of the times when we do mobilize funding with our various partners, uh, sometimes the funding is earmarked uh, with um, it's earmarked according to development partners' you know, interests and plans. So today, we, we see an opportunity for private sector to become more conversant with uh, uh, climate change issues mm. and green economy so that they could uh, present more projects uh, around that. So whether it's in green infrastructure, green buildings, or uh, forestry, for instance. But at the end of the day, uh, what we are committing on our side is to say, let's increase the allocation from what is it today? Yes, around 5% to a good 30 to 50% uh, over the years. We want to bring it at par with other programs. That will require us, from us uh, uh, strong efforts in mobilizations of resources, mm. uh, expanding eventually uh, 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 our, our source of funding uh, beyond development partners. We have also philanthropy that is available we have uh, CSR and foundations that are uh, within foundations that are actually interested in in climate resilience uh, um, activities. We have uh, different partners also at the global level, uh, such as the, glo the, 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 the Green Climate Fund. And the Green Climate Fund is a partner, remains a partner in supporting us in various projects. So we want to make sure we tap in all the resources available, both on grants, but also in terms of uh, loan, so that it can also trickle down to our local private sector. Now, we do know that Rwanda has a vision uh, to become a low carbon and uh, climate resilient economy by 2050. Mm -hmm. What are you doing to see that some of uh, these projects that you're directly funding or that you're partnering with are aligned with this particular vision? So, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we tend to 
So you can have an assessment on the projects right. uh, 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 that is one uh, uh, from a business perspective. Is, is there a business case? Is it addressing a, a solution? Right. And how do you solve that? Uh, from you know, how do you solve the issue? Second, uh, uh, the return on investment. Third, the impact on the environment. And 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 as much as there's an impact on the environment, what are the solutions that are bringing the energy or the, the gas emission at a lower level? How do we use energy efficient uh, solution? Whether it's in renewable energy, whether it's in agriculture, whether it's in, even in infrastructure, as I said, the way you will build your structures, you know, can comply with energy efficiency. All right. So all those are the components that we tend to see or we like to see in, in uh, the project preparation. Okay, that's uh, very interesting and uh, maybe some of uh, the final things that uh, we want to look at is that uh, according to the National uh, Strategy for Transformation, uh, the government is looking at uh, giving up to 80% of the state-owned forests or state-run forests mm -hmm. to the private sector. This hasn't happened yet, and uh, we're seeing a slow pace towards this. Why exactly aren't we seeing the private sector being as willing enough to take on this project? Well, um, I, I would believe uh, we need to have private sector more, I would say, conversant with the mechanism first, mm -hmm. different mechanism on forestry management, second on carbon trading uh, uh, um, credits, and third, uh, having project preparation around forestry that would be uh, uh, translated into a big return on investment. For instance, um, today we are, we are currently discussing with a firm that could you know, revamp the whole bamboo industry. All right. and, and to me, this is a good example on how forestry can be uh, 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 translated into a viable business you know that with bamboo you, you is it lucrative though it can turn out to be lucrative in terms of um, manufacturing uh, furnitures and made in Rwanda but also uh, different items that we tend to import such as toothpick uh, uh, and basically um, bringing our imports uh, uh, down and, right. and, and, and reinforcing made in Rwanda